Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to learn how to put rivets in the symbol. So I've assembled uh, a large quantity of tools here to show you what you'll need. And in a moment, we'll go over into the shop to actually do the drilling of the symbol. And I'll need an assistant for that. But she's busy right now, so we'll start here. So normally when I drill symbols, I'll make templates. Um, so this is a template here. And this is actually an old timpani cover. I have several of these. This works great. You can get a piece of Luan, which is cheap door material. Really anything that'll maybe bend a little is good. And I've started to mark this a little, but I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. The template's really important. It makes life a lot easier and makes everything repeatable. So what you're going to need here, I'll go slowly so you, you get it. Uh, First of all, we're going to need a Sharpie. I use a silver Sharpie because you can see it on everything, on the symbol and on a template. You'll need a piece of metal with something rubber on the back. You don't have to have the rubber. It just makes it uh, useful. This is something I use to test drumsticks when I make them. works great for riveting symbols. So you see I've had it for a long time. Then you'll need a ball-peen hammer. This uh, gets used later when we hammer the rivets and then you'll need a drill bit now uh, the size of the drill bit will vary depending on how big your rivets are so this is a rivet hopefully you can see this and I got these from Zildjian you can get them they're really easy to get and you want to make that drill bit just about a sixteenth larger than the actual rivet you know it could be an eighth that's a little too big though that's important because when you hammer the other side of the rivet, if it's going to fall, tend to fall out if you make your hole too big. And you can only hammer these things so much before they bend. So whatever size rivet you have, that's the drill bit. Uh, you're going to get just a tiny bit larger. And you can tell by just comparing the back to it. If you can see that, it's just a tiny bit larger. Now, if you have a set of drill bits, like this DeWalt set, um, you can go by size, and I think this is probably a 5 30 seconds size. It's close, okay? And I like these titanium bits. Uh, I use these, they last a long time. They cut through symbols like butter. So that's what I would suggest using. Then later on, you're going to need uh, this is an electrical electrician's tool for stripping wire. I do a lot of that, but uh, it's actually great for this because the uh, 1210 wire works perfectly for holding a rivet. So once you get it in a symbol, you can hold it and steady while you hammer it. That's important so you don't hit your symbol and also so you don't bend the rivet. So that's actually better than this, which is what most people use, which is a needle nose pair of pliers. This works a lot better, okay? And then you'll need an electric drill to start with the template, but not for the drilling of the symbol. You never want to do that because it'll wander. Uh, you basically want to use a drill press because you can just, as you'll see later, you can just dial it down and hold the symbol, and the symbol will not move. All right, but this is to just make the template. And then you'll need a boring bit. So this is a half inch boring bit, and this will work to make our hole here, which is the center of the symbol for the template. You can also use a regular drill bit if you want. I just like these boring bits. They have a point, so they stay where you put them. And then finally, you'll need a T-square to make your uh, markings. And a tape measure comes in handy, too. All right. Now, you'll see here I have this little bolt that I use with some washers. This is going to hold the template or template, however you want to say it, onto the symbol, okay? So that's important. And that's also about a little under a half inch, all right? Okay, so let's get started. So the first step is to get your disc made or buy one. It's cardboard works good too. This just lasts forever. I've had this one for a while. And you can just mark it so you'll find the center. And to do that, you can use a symbol. So here's a symbol that I riveted. This is a artisan, Sabian artisan. Nice symbol. And I normally put eight rivets in my 20-inch symbols. 
and 22s so it's always eight rivets all right and I'll put them spread out like this about an inch and a half in now if I put this on the template you see that this piece is just about a quarter of an inch wider which is perfect than the symbol that's important so you can see where you are as far as it being round if it's the same size as the symbol you won't be able to see where you are and so what you do then is you can mark with the sharpie you can go in there and mark your hole on your template just use the symbol and write in there and then just mark that and you're good to go okay so that's step one so we'll do that right now we'll drill the hole I already marked it and you'll need a piece of wood to put under that template okay anything works piece of scrap that's important don't just drill it in the air <laughs> it won't work all right and then you take your drill I'm using this little tiny Bosch drill all right put that in there and you're going to want to go slow this has several settings again make sure it's under there put it right in the middle of there where you marked your hole and drill slowly and you'll hit you'll hit the wood and you're done okay makes a little bit of a mess clean that up later so there you go nice and clean that's better than a regular drill bit trust me on that all right this is what I used to use and you know the problem was it would kind of wander and tear out and stuff like that all right so now we have that and then we can put our piece of wood away for now we'll use this again later on the drill press so then we have to draw our holes all right now if you already have a riveted symbol what you could do is take that symbol and put it on a hard surface and straighten the rivets out and hammer it and that'll mark the piece for you but if you don't have a riveted symbol you're going to have to do it this way and this is the trickiest part of this whole operation besides putting the rivets in at the end so you take your t-square and you're going to measure it out to the middle of that hole okay and you're going to draw a line get it as close as you can all right it doesn't have to be perfect just like this all right so that's our first line it's roughly in the middle it's not perfect it's not a big deal I don't think anyone's going to measure the space between your rivets but I like it to be as close as possible and then you're going to take the next one and do it again in half like this so you're making a plus sign all right so that's how you're going to start there you go now you're going to take the next one and that's where you need your tape measure okay you're going to measure between the two points like this and that's about 14 inches a little under all right six uh, about 13 and 7 eighths yep perfect so that gives us our space for the rivets right so if we divide 14 and a half we get seven but it's a little bit a little bit more so we can seven is safe all right but you have to remember we're going an inch and a half inside so that's going to be our measurement so you can do the math on a piece of paper or you can just use your ruler all right so I'm coming up with about six and five eighths between each rivet going an inch and a half in remember outer is seven but we're going an inch and a half in so that formula gives us about six and five eighths an inch and a half in so we'll go and we'll measure all the way around six and five eighths okay and then we'll mark that it's perfect right on the line and we'll mark this one and then we'll mark this one just about a sixteenth off which you're never going to notice okay and then we'll mark this one 
that's perfect. And then we'll mark this. That's good. And last one. Perfect. All right. So there's our template. Okay. And that is where we're going to drill the holes in the symbol. Or we're going to use this to mark the symbol, in other words. Okay. So the next thing we do is we are going to use a drill bit to mark to drill into these holes on our template. Now, on some of my templates, I have them marked all over because I can do 18s and 16s, and it's rare that I do a 16, but I have to fix, the, fix a crack or something. So, you know, you can use this whole thing. Uh, if you have a bigger symbol, you're going to probably need a bigger template, like a 26. Uh, I've never riveted a 26. I've riveted a 24, and then I have a larger template for that. But most of the riveting takes a 22 or a 20, which is what I mostly have. All right. So... Then we're going to drill that, and again, now we'll use our piece of wood again. And for that, we're going to use something a little bigger, okay, than what the rivet's going to be, uh, or bigger than we're going to use the uh, bit to drill the rivet. So this is going to be a 3 16 bit that we're going to use to drill these holes. That's so we can get the tip of the pen in there. Now, you don't want to drill the symbol with this, this on top of it, all right? I've tried that, trust me. You can't really see what you're doing, especially on the press. So let's just drill these quickly. Again, put it, your piece of wood there. See what that does? That's a drill bit, so it, it wants to walk up on you where the boring bits won't do it. Unfortunately, I don't have a boring bit that's this small. Now, you can use the tip of the boring bit. Actually, you know what? I think last time I did that. Let's try that. And you can also slow the drill down, which I should have done. But that'll take away all the stuff down. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's all right. All right, let's try this one. That'll work. And this one. Let's get it right in the center. All right. And this one. There we go. Let me straighten this out. Okay. All right. So there's our holes. See? You can use either side. And if we have to enlarge those, this is where you can use, you can go back and use the drill bit now because it won't ride up on it because there's already a hole there. So you can just put that in there like that. All right, so it won't create those shavings. It looks good, though. So it shouldn't be a problem. All right. So that's our template. That's how you do it. Now, I've chosen a symbol today that I really don't care about. <laughs> I found it at a flea market. It's an old Peisty 602. So this symbol, it's a really old one, a heavy 602, the heaviest one I've ever seen. And it's a 20. Uh, whoever was using it was really kind of abusing it. It's got tape on it, and it looks pretty gross. Could probably clean it, but I have so many ride symbols, it wouldn't be worth it. But I, I have wanted to put a um, uh, rivet in a very heavy ride symbol because I don't have one of those. So this is what we're going to use today. So what you do... Now, you want to drill from the bottom, okay? That's very important. So you'll drill from the bottom when you put the rivets in. Don't drill this way from here, because what you can do is you can do that. You can rest it on a piece of wood. Where it's at the top, it's going to have a bow to it, all right? You can do that uh, if you want, but if you use a really sharp drill bit in the drill press, don't worry, it won't, it won't turn it up, and you can file that down if you have to. 
but I always drill from the bottom. All right, and so what you do now is you take your, oops, sorry, you take your piece of, uh, your bolt, put a washer on one side, and put it through the cymbal bell. If you want, you can put a piece of felt if you're worried about it. It won't hurt it though. And then you take your template, all right, and rest it on top. Now, it should be so it bends, okay? So you're gonna have to apply some pressure to it. That's important. So this part's tricky. So just do that and then screw it in there and you can get a pair of vice grips and just get it nice and tight. All right, so that's what we got. See it? Looks pretty good all the way around, maybe a sixteenth off. That's our template for it. All right, and then what I'll do, there's two ways you can do this now. You can mark it with the pen, all right? So you can get your Sharpie and go all the way around and press this down and do that. So we'll do that. It's important that it doesn't move when you're doing this. So I'm going in the holes that I made in the template so we can drill that symbol. You can drill it like this, okay? But that tends to ruin your templates over time. I'll do it twice just to make sure. Now these silver Sharpies are good. They smell great too. <laughs> but you can see them. They almost glow. All right, so we got that. And then we'll see what happens here. So we'll undo the bolt on our template and we'll see if it came out. It did, nice. All right, and there's our schematic of where we're gonna drill. So eight holes, you see they're marked in silver and then we'll check the distance. Perfect, inch and a half all the way around. Yep. All good. Now, if it's not perfect, uh, this will be, but if it's not, it's okay. I mean, again, they're rivets in a symbol. But if you're a perfectionist like me, you're going to want them to be symmetrical. I'm all kind of crazy like that. All right. So the next stop will be the shop. I'll go grab my wife if she's available. And we'll go out there and I'll show you how to drill the holes. And then after that, I'll show you how to put the rivets in. So here we are in the shop. My lovely wife is working the camera. Say hello. hello. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right. So this is a drill press. Uh, it's got several speeds. I have it on slow right now. That's what you want to use for drilling the symbol. And I have a piece of maple here. You want a piece of hardwood to drill under the symbol so you don't raise the top of the symbol when you drill through it. And you want to clamp, if you're doing this by yourself as I am, you want to clamp to hold the symbol, a gentle clamp. So always wear glasses when you drill any kind of metal, because you know metal in your eye is not a good way to start your day. All right, so we're gonna drill the first hole. And what you do is you try to center it like this over the hole, and then you clamp it. And if you have to make adjustments, you can. Don't clamp it too tight. Just like that. And then when you drill, you'll drill right through nice and slow. So, sweetie, can you get a close-up? Let me know when you're ready. Got it? Is that a yes? Uh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I drilled the first hole, nice and smooth. Okay. Okay. Wait, let me try to. That's about as zoomy as it gets. Good, that's fine. There's the hole. Very exciting. Okay, and then we'll do another one, and we'll just proceed. Okay, one more.
Let me make sure this chuck is tight. Again, don't apply too much pressure when you do this. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. If it's a sharp drill bit, it'll just go right through that. And you see here the shavings of that. The Peisty alloy tends to be a little harder, especially than the old K. It goes right through that like butter. All right. How many of these do you make? Eight. Cool. Yeah, I already did the first part of the video. You see how the symbol wants to ride up. Uh, that's why you need this clamp, because the symbol will try to ride up as that drill bit, bit grips it. And that can be a little bit dangerous. So just make sure all that is really tight. And again, always wear glasses. It's a little tight there. Okay. Couple more to go. You have any more advice for our listeners while we're drilling holes and symbols? Very funny. <laughs> One more. Oh, wow. cool. Now again, if you were doing this with a hand drill, it would you see how it rides up. The drill might skirt all over and make scratches in the symbol. I've made that mistake when I first tried this. I learned pretty quickly not to do it like that. That was the last one. That was the last one. And there you have it. Let me zoom out and get you and your symbol. Okay. Okay. Well, this is a flea market symbol. That is lovely and brilliant. Okay, don't don't do Smile. that. You're gonna offend our How many, British um, listeners. Okay, we have eight holes. A riveting video on rivets. Oh Jesus! All right. The end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back in the studio, and I've got the symbol set up here, ready to rivet. You can see this block that I clamp to my table here. That's important because you're going to need the symbol to be at an angle. So it rests on this metal thing that I made. It's my stick tester actually to test for pitch. It's got rubber on the back and it's steel, solid steel. And I put that under the symbol and then I put the symbol on this block. Alright? And then I'll take a rivet, put it in. Obviously the larger end goes in the top and you rest it on that. Now it's important that that stays straight when you hammer it. Things are going to start moving around as you'll see. So the best thing to do is clamp it with this wire stripper and use the 1210 uh, wire. Don't worry, it won't cut it. And then you hold it like that. Now one thing you can do with certain rivets is you can start them off with this nail set, all right? That will fit in the hole and you can flange it just a little. And that starts it off. So when you hammer it, it's gonna be a little easier. And I use a ball peen hammer, all right? And you just... A ball peen hammer works really well because it's kind of got and um, a point, it's not a sharp point, it's a rounded point, and you can center that right on a rivet. It works a lot better than a regular flathead 
hammer. And so you see there, hopefully, that it really did a good job getting that flat and straight. And now, I just pulled it out to show you. Hopefully you can see that. That's how it looks. It should be straight and flanged. I'm going to put it back in and finish the job. Sometimes they're hard to get back in, and if I normally don't pull them out. If it is, I'll just start another one. But I just wanted to show you what the flange looked like without trying to bring the whole symbol up. Okay, so once again, put it on the metal. Make sure you have your block. Take your wire stripper. Use 1210. Don't squeeze too tight, and just use the point of the hammer. This time I'm going to make it a lot bigger so it won't come through. That looks good. That's never coming out. Okay? So you see there's our first rivet. Alright, so let's go ahead and do some of the others. We'll do them quickly. Now one thing before I go on, if this is sharp, you can take a file and hold it with this and file it down just all the way around like that. I'll normally do that anyway. These things will cut you and they will scratch your other symbols. Normally with sizzle symbols you want to put those in a like a bag. You know what what, uh, what works great are the um, are the Sabian little bags. They come in um, the um, the V symbols come in uh, little bags, and I use those for my sizzle symbols. And I know some companies make separate symbol bags for each symbol. They're good because if you put these in with sharp rivets, they will scratch your other symbols. So that's good there. Yeah, it's not sharp at all. All right, and also make sure it won't come through. And then pretty much you just go around and do the same thing for all of them, and it's very quick. Now, I'm not going to use this nail set because uh, I don't need to on these rivets, but again, if you need to, you just put it in there and start it off. But this will be pretty quick. And again, use this to hold it. That one's a little bit too, too small, just hit, give it a few more shots. There we go. Now if you use brass rivets, uh, Peisty makes those, uh, if you use those, be really careful because brass riv rivets are extremely soft. They um, they will crush down if you hammer them too hard. So you have to have a really light touch when you hammer those rivets. Or else you'll, you'll bend them. If you bend them, you just break them off, put another one in. Rivets are cheap. It's not a big deal. But, um, you know, you want to do it right the first time. Now, uh, just to show you what, it would, what would happen if I didn't use that nail set. What happens there is the rivet starts to bend. It starts to crush in. So instead of flanging out, it bends. You don't want that. So I would definitely use some sort of pliers or these wire strippers work great. They just hold it steady. Now, if you're a little paranoid about your symbol, 
it's getting dented if you have an okay or something you don't like the the metal sound there you could put a little um pad or even fold over some paper towels and put them on this metal piece again this symbol is not important to me so i'm not worried about it but if that's something you're concerned about that's no problem the, the weight of the hammer will transfer through that those towels Three more to go. I have some used rivets here. <laughs> I don't know where I got those. Watch out when you use these wire strippers. I just cut my finger. I was being careless. And last one. And there you have it. So that's how you do it. That's how you rivet a symbol. And again, if these are a little sharp, you can go in there and hold it and just use your file. That's a big one. I have a small one. I just can't find it. Uh, and file those down. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me. RickDior at gmail.com. But uh, this is very simple. If you do it the right way, you will never, ever have a problem. Uh, just follow these simple directions. And um, good luck. So take care. So while we're out here, I figured I'd give you a quick tour of the shop. This is where I make all the sticks. Uh, so you, my wife's going to follow me along here. So here's uh, the uh, dowels that I make from the the main slabs of wood. This is what it looks like when I cut it up. This is persimmon. I cut them up into squares, the slabs, and then I make dowels with the dowel maker, which is right over there, and then I have to let the dowels dry as well, sometimes for as much as a year. And then this is leopard wood, so hopefully it's straight, it is. And I have this little bin, that's where I keep it, and then I weigh it, and do all that, so it's a multi-step process. And then over here, these are some sticks I just made for a customer. These are inverted tip sticks, kind of a new model, pretty cool. And so I do the finishing over here. Right now I have a bunch of leopard wood drying. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in, trying to get it. Yeah. We may not be able to use this, so don't worry. So these, this is where I do the finish. And anything else? This is just a regular old shop. You can go around, table saw, miter saw. And then let's actually show them, it's okay. Let's show them the lathe. It's gonna be bumpy for a minute. And this is the lathe where the magic happens. That's pretty much it. So 
So usually I spend half a day out here when I've practiced too much and I'll just make sticks. It's very relaxing. It can be physically exhausting though. Not sure if that mic is picking me up because I'm all the way over here, but we'll just use the camera mic. It'll sound bad, but... All right. Thanks. Good night.